So in the last video, we came to a preliminary equation here that tells us just how fast we need to be going in order to achieve an orbit. And there's the equation there. And just to fill in some numbers here, uh, g is a constant that comes from uh, physics, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. And in case you're a little rusty on the times 10 to the minus 11, it means there'd be 11 zeros in front of the number before you get started. So it'd be something like 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And there's your 11, 6, 7, something like that. So it'd be sort of a very small number. Uh, this is the shorthand notation for it. You can see how convenient it is. And then, of course, but it's right next to, in the formula up here, the small number is going to be next to a, a large number, which is the mass of the planet, in this case, which is the Earth, which is 6 times 10 to the 24th kilogram. So likewise, it's like 6, and then 1, 2, 3, and you, know, and you have sort of 24 zeros going that way. So once again, you can see the convenience of the shorthand notation, the scientific notation, but that's the number. And then if you wanted to sort of wonder about the orbit for a height of something like maybe 300 miles or so, and these types of orbits, by the way, are called LEO, or Low Earth Orbits, because all you're really doing, and this is most of what we do in space these days, kind of a downer, is if the Earth is like this, then you're trying to put your satellite maybe into sort of an orbit that looks like this, right? Just sort of a low Earth orbit for 3,000, 300 miles like that. If I punch in all the numbers then, I will get a speed of something like 18,000 miles per hour. And that's really fast. Um, you know, why do we have to do it that way? Well, you don't really have a choice because g is a constant of the universe. You can't do anything about that. It's going to be 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. And you certainly can't do anything about the mass of the Earth. I mean, what are you going to do? Start blowing rocks into space to make it smaller or something? So you can't really do anything about the 6 times 10 to the 24th. Then, of course, you know, as a design decision, if you want to get 300 miles high, maybe to get just something like this going, that's the number you need. And so that's where the number comes out to be. So the question is, well, gosh, you know, 18,000 miles per hour? You know, yeah, 18,000 miles per hour. So when you draw a little arrow on your satellite here and put a V equals, you'd put this 18,000 miles per hour next to it. They're moving quite fast up there. Okay, so the question is, where does 18,000 miles per hour come from? And the information, and the, the answer to that, rather, is from rockets. And so when you see something like this happen here, okay, when you see a rocket on the launch pad and it starts out, 15 seconds, I love rocket launches, 10, 10 9, 8, 8 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition, Falcon 9, liftoff of the Falcon 9. When you see this happening, all of this fire and smoke. It's an explosion between liquid oxygen and kerosene. And if you look over here in the corner of the display, they're telling you the speed of the rocket. You know, 300 kilometers an hour, way faster than a car is gonna go. And just that, that constant flame and that constant burning of the rocket fuel just makes this thing go faster and faster and faster faster and faster and faster faster than anything we know on Earth. Look at how the speed is just going. Look at that, how crazy that is. It's about five kilometers, four kilometers high now. Look how fast it's going. It's, look how fast the speed still increases like that. And so that's sort of what the story is there with the rockets like that, is that is a, ve a, a mechanism on Earth, a vehicle on Earth, that can deliver the 18,000 miles per hour. And so what the rockets do to achieve these low Earth orbits is, as you can see, they don't just go straight up like that, no way. They launch up a little bit like that, as straight as they can, and then they just start curving over like that until they can sort of get into orbit like that. So that's how these satellites get into orbit. Again, to the tune of 18,000 miles per hour. That's just the way it gets. Now, if you want to go to another planet like Mars, I just wanted to point out then that if you want to get to another planet like Mars, what you have to do is if you're on the Earth right here and say your rocket is sitting here, I don't want to really draw a red rocket, but say a green rocket is sitting here like this. There's some fins there and it's going to take off. And then the red planet Mars is set away over here. You have quite a bit of traveling you need to do. And in that case, 
they do not just shoot straight for the planets like this. This is, again, not the trajectory that's taken. Typically, a, a trajectory taken to get to a planet is going to sort of maybe go up. It might even orbit the Earth a few times just to sort of get going here a little bit. And then at some point, it's boosted away onto a orbit that's going to make it to Mars. And this sort of distance speed that's needed here uh, is something a little closer, even a little higher, is 25,000 miles per hour. And this is sort of a commonly known number here. This is required... to leave Earth's gravity because you want to start getting under the influence of an entirely different planet. Remember that no matter where you are, say with your rocket, like say your rocket's right here, there still is the mass of the planet and the mass of your rocket right here. And as we discussed, there still is a D between them. So it's almost like no matter where you get, Earth is always going to be trying to pull you back with its own force of gravity. But of course, it gets weaker and weaker the farther you get because remember, the force of gravity is inverse to the distance squared away from the planet. We discussed that quite some time ago. And in fact, if you manage to achieve a velocity of this fast, again, you can break free of the Earth's gravity. And that's going to be required to get to Mars. So you are talking about achieving the speed here of 25,000 miles per hour. Now here's the next consideration, okay? Is that, well, how do you travel in space? How do you get from one planet to the other? Are you constantly firing the engines or what? I will take that up in the next video.